Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I've got some BF4 gameplay highlights for you and we're going to be talking about cloud-based video game streaming, specifically Google Stadia. Now, BF4, someone suggested in the comments uh, a couple of weeks ago, use the MTAR. So I thought, alright then, I'll use the MTAR. <laughs> so we've got a bit of that on propaganda followed by a nice bit of AEK action on Pearl Market. Now then, game streaming. I've talked about it a couple of times before, but with Google straying into the fray and Xbox apparently coming out with some kind of big game streaming announcement soon, I thought that it would be an interesting topic to talk about. So, Google Stadia, what is it? Well, you may have heard that name over the last couple of weeks or so. It's not a car. <laughs> Honestly, I think it sounds like one. What it doesn't sound like is a gaming platform. That's exactly what it is. Naming aside, Google Stadia is a cloud-based gaming platform and from what I can see, Google is really pushing this and spending a lot of money on it. Almost to the point where they want it to be the Netflix of gaming. Perhaps instead of logging onto Netflix to watch a film, you'll instead log on to Stadia and play a game. Is that really where we're heading though? Well, we're going to talk about this in the video and you may remember that like I said I've talked about this before about seven months ago I covered what GeForce Now is like and I mentioned back then how a lot of companies have tried this before and maybe the games industry is heading in this direction. Sony have got something similar and EA are rumoured to be working on a cloud-based gaming system too. So it seems that a lot of big publishers and tech companies see this as the future but is it really how we're going to end up playing games well more on that in a bit we're going to first talk about stadia itself first of all this is not a games console this is a system that works entirely over the cloud over the internet and it will allow you to play games in a number of ways from your tv mobile device laptop internet browser whatever you want if you can run google stadia on it you can play it now the cool thing is that you could play any game on your phone and then you can move that to your TV and it would pick up from where you left off which is also the same for the controller but wait you said this isn't a console well that's true but Google have made their own controller to go along with the service but it's not required it's an optional purchase if you wanted it and to be sure that you could use it with any game that you play but they did say that you can use Xbox controllers, mouse and keyboard if you want to. But this controller does have some cool features I think. For instance it connects to your network wirelessly and so you can move it between devices pretty easily. More importantly without it having to resync to different devices. Not only that but the controller will let you do streaming specific tasks. So while it's not necessarily required it's probably advisable for anyone using Stadia consistently. So the key thing with a service like this is really how good the quality of the video feed that's being streamed to your device is actually going to be and what's the input lag like. Well I mentioned earlier that I've played GeForce now and while I think the service is good for what it is it's of course not as good as actually playing a game natively on your own system. It's never going to look quite that crisp however Stadia is designed to run games at 60 FPS with a 4K resolution and not only that but Google's Medj Bakar said that Stadia in the future will achieve resolutions of 8K at up to 120 FPS. I don't want to be a realist here, but there are some issues that I can see with this straight away. We all know how big a conglomerate Google is. They've got so much money, they're practically a superpower. Now, we can all imagine how intelligent their programmers, engineers and researchers are. And I know they've got an incredible backbone network that allows them to have data centers all around the world with miles and miles of fiber optic cables. But I don't think anyone could dispute that they've got a fantastic network infrastructure. The problem though is that some areas and countries perhaps aren't quite up to the task of streaming those sorts of resolutions consistently. Perhaps Google has some streaming wizardry up their sleeves but I'd say that in some parts of the UK this sort of service just isn't going to be that viable. That's also not even taking into consideration the input lag and the delay and I think while 4k and 60 fps is being thrown around the likelihood is that the majority of people that would use a service like this are more than likely going to be streaming at 1080p. It's also worth thinking about the encoder that's being used here too. If you've ever watched a YouTube video or a Twitch stream you will absolutely notice that sometimes the encoder coder struggles to render busy areas with a lot of information such as grassy areas or really 
busy textures and that causes pixelation and artifacts. This is a problem that's pretty hard to get rid of and of course not one that you have when playing natively on your own system. Now Google have made their own bespoke encoder for this and while the overall image quality does look good, how well is that going to hold up in fast paced games and if your connection slows down? But back to the delay and the input lag for a second. This is a big problem and one that can't be understated. If you're playing a racing game or an FPS game, the network delay that you're going to have could vary dramatically based on your internet connection. But one thing's for sure, it will never be as fast as if you're playing on your home system. That much is obvious. At home, you've got yourself, your system, and if there is an online component, you've got a further latency there too. If you're playing Assassin's Creed though at home, the delay that you have really is just between you and your TV. And some TVs do have more of an input lag delay than others. With Stadia though, when you do an input on your controller, that data is going to a Google data center that's essentially a ton of supercomputers running the game. And then it's coming back from those data centers to your device. There is always going to be a delay, no matter how small, at least for the time being. Digital Foundry, great website, recently tested the Stadia and when playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they scored roughly a 166 millisecond delay and that was at 1080p 30fps. Now the core element of how well this system will work is if you feel a noticeable delay when using the controller and the type of game. If you're playing a racing game and you feel the delay or a fighting game and a twitch shooter and you miss a dodge, it's going to become a really frustrating experience, especially if you're playing against people who are natively running those games. And Digital Foundry also said that the controller response felt the best of any cloud-based system that they've experienced so far, but they were on a 200 MB Google network. So would that change when you're in a more unreliable or slower network out in the wild at home? The reality is though that not every gamer out there has a real sensitivity to delay. As PC gamers, I would say that a lot of us try to get the best response time from our controls and our monitors, but a lot of more casual players really don't care that much. A lot of home TVs have incredibly large delays, especially older ones anyway, unless they've got a game mode. And even then, they do have a substantial delay when compared to a proper gaming monitor. So with that in mind, would the average gamer really care or notice if they had an another 40 to 50 milliseconds in delay, providing the visuals were on par and the streaming service actually worked as intended. For me, it depends on what type of game you're playing. And I'd say that if any company in the world could pull off an infrastructure that's needed for something like this, it's absolutely going to be Google. Remember the ill-fated on live service? Well, this isn't that. In fact, that was bought by Sony. Stadia also comes with some really interesting features that perhaps do signal where we're going with gaming. Developers will be able to run games directly off the data center without the need for a console. And Doom Eternal is going to be one of those titles that's going to take up that offer. And it's going to run at 4K 60fps. Epic Games have also announced that they're going to be fully supporting Stadia with their Unreal Engine, which is a huge deal because it's probably one of the most used gaming engines out there. But that's not even the coolest part. If you're watching a YouTube video, say this one right now, and I'm playing BF4, you would be able to click a button on the video and then be playing the game yourself within seconds via Stadia. Of course, providing the game is available. They also claim that if you're, say, watching someone stream on YouTube, so maybe me right now playing Sea of Thieves or Firestorm, then I could invite you directly in and you could join with Stadia. You can even use the Google Assistant to help you out if you're stuck in a tricky part of a single player game. And it can overlay a YouTube video to help you get past that point. It's kind of cool, but I'm not sure how many people would do that. Right now, we've got no idea exactly how this service will work. Do you need to own the games to play them? Will it have its own catalog available? Is it a yearly price, a monthly subscription? Well, none of that is really known right now, but considering it's Google, it's absolutely going to be competitive. And Stadia will launch in North America, Canada, Western Europe, and the UK by the end of 2019. And while I am confident that Google are the company to push cloud gaming forward, I do remain skeptical. Is this the future for gaming? Is this how we're going to be playing games in five years? Is this what we want? But more importantly, can it work on a large scale at the resolutions promised with minimal delay? That more than anything is what I'm hoping to find out. Me personally, I will always value having a native system, whether it's a PC or a console, and just being in control of everything. But maybe in the future, there'll be a market out there in a simpler time when people just stream all their games. We will see. 
And that's all for today, guys. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of cloud gaming, streaming your games? If you could play Firestorm on your phone or whatever, maybe it'd be cool. Maybe it'd be terrible. Who knows? Either way, let me know below, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.